So that's the goal. These sites would become those who are collaborating to fill the gaps in the Great Commission. And so one of the things Lausanne is doing moving forward is we are creating a, a platform, a place where people who want to fill particular gaps can find each other, can start to talk to one another about these gaps and start to find ways to collaborate together. We want to resource them with models for innovation. Here are models for collaboration. Welcome to the Lausanne Movement Podcast, where we have a passion to accelerate global mission together. If you like today's episode, won't you take a moment to rate and review our podcast and subscribe? That way you won't miss a thing. And now for today's interview. Justin, welcome to the podcast. It's great to have you with us. Hey, Jason, it's good to be here with you. As many of our podcast listeners know, we're building momentum towards the fourth design gathering that is to be held in South Korea in September this year. And we're going to be hosting Congress members in person, and we're going to be hosting Congress members online for a virtual event. But we also want to inspire the whole church. And that has been an initiative that you have been leading called Satellite Sites, and I'm keen to unpack that initiative with you. But Justin, before we get there, just to start us off, could you share a bit about yourself? And then the vision behind the satellite program for Lausanne's 2024 Congress. What inspired this initiative? Yeah, Jason, thanks for that. I've been on staff with Lausanne for about 11 years now, serving as director of executive projects, just partnering with our CEO, Michael O, on various initiatives over the years. And yeah, this is a big one, the Congress itself, but also satellite sites. And when I think about the satellite sites, I'm actually reminded of a story I read recently, how in 1974, which is an important year for Lausanne, right? That's our birth year, you could say. But in 1974, something else was happening in the world. Actually, in Poland, in Warsaw, there was a tower being built. I think it was 2,120 feet, something like that, 650-ish meters tall. At the time, the largest man-made structure ever until the Burj Khalifa was, was built. It was the tallest man-made structure ever. And it was called the Warsaw Radio Mast. And the goal of this tower was that the whole world, the whole world could hear the good news of communism. That the whole world could hear. They would say on a good weather day, you could pick up the signal in Antarctica. And so you're getting this message beamed out, this message that they felt was so important that they built this tower and went through all this effort to get the word out. And it's a heartbreaking thing, actually, to think that so much effort and time spent promoting an ideology that's taken so many lives. In one sense, I hate to use it as a picture for what we're after, but I think Satan has a mission in the world, too. And he wants it to cover the face of the earth. But what we're saying is we have a better message. We have good news. We have life-changing news. And we want to get it out to the ends of the earth. We want the whole church to hear about it. And so in some ways, that radio tower, which collapsed in the 90s, actually, all the pieces are laying in rubble there still in Poland. We have a message that will never lie in ruins. It will be proclaimed, and then it will find its reality for eternity. And that's, in a, in a way, the vision for me of satellite sites is that we have these awesome events, local, these congresses, uh, but for the first time ever, actually, the global church, the global church has a chance to hear not just the specialists, not just the professional ministry leaders, but churches and God's people in the marketplace, the families, local ministries can hear the news on the state of the Great Commission. They can wrestle in their local communities with, well, how are we going to respond? And so that's the vision that the whole church would hear, would get to participate in what God's already been doing, but certainly what will happen at the Fourth Congress in, in September. You know, as I think of that picture of a tower that was built to broadcast a human message compared to the message that Christ had given to each and every one of us, the message of salvation, the message of hope. That is the goal. That is the vision. And so as you build upon to sharing the vision with us as your listeners, could you share with us what is your hope for the satellite sites? 
Yeah, that's a good question because if this doesn't change anything, then it's a wasted effort. About three years ago, Lausanne started a process of global listening. It was a process in research of trying to essentially say, what is the state of the Great Commission? Where are the gaps in the Great Commission? What are the challenges to the Great Commission? Where does more effort and and partnership and uh, research and resources need to be given to that? And so what's happened is we, we now have the clearest picture, I think, ever of the state of the Great Commission in the world, the challenges in our day, so current and and maybe even anticipated future challenges to fulfilling the Great Commission. And so whether it's those gathered in Seoul, that gathered in Korea in person, or these satellite sites that we're talking about, we have a chance to hear the clearest, most up-to-date status of the Great Commission. And as we hear the call from Lausanne, both on site and then to satellite sites, is how can we link arms to help fill these gaps or take on these challenges or take advantage of these opportunities, right? And so it's to bring these sites into a global conversation around fulfilling the Great Commission. And so what do I hope it would achieve? Well, one, that the global church gains clarity on the state of the Great Commission. Two, that they hear a clear invitation to help fill the gaps that remain, to help address the challenges that have been identified. I think three, that they would find a an avenue. So whether this is a church hosting or a seminary or a workplace network or a mission agency, that they would find avenues to link with others who want to help fill those gaps as well. So if I say that the gap of Bibleless peoples, there are still about a thousand languages that the Bible translation hasn't started in. I care about that, and I want to know who else cares about that so we can work together to fill that gap. If it's reaching the unreached Muslim peoples, well, I care about that. Our church maybe already has some missionaries working in these places, or our denomination. We want to help fill that gap. So we need to link arms with others who want to fill that gap. So informing, challenging, and then calling for a response is the, that's the hope of these satellite sites. Justin, thank you for painting such a great picture of the hope that you have for the satellite sites. Now, I know that you've been traveling all around, connecting with leaders of various organizations and different ministries, speaking to them about these satellite sites. Could you do me a favor and give me your pitch? Why should ministry leaders consider hosting a satellite site at their local church or within their seminary or within their organization? What are the benefits for them as a leadership and for the community that they intend to gather? It it depends on the the person I'm talking to. But if say you're a seminary president, you are preparing gospel ministers to serve in the 21st century, Lord willing to help fulfill the Great Commission. And so your students, they're going out, they're going to serve in a global context. Increasingly, they're not going to be in isolated monocultural bubbles. And so what would it look like for them, not just to hear the state of the Great Commission, what I just shared, I think that's probably enough reason for for any of these groups to host, but to then hear the proclamation of God's word, the exposition of the book of Acts from a team of global expositors to be updated on what God is doing in each region of the world, to hear plenaries addressing some of the key challenges to the Great Commission. You you know, just off the top of my head, how should the church think about and, and missionally respond to artificial intelligence? How is our mission going to go forward in a world confused on gender and sexuality? What does it mean to be human even is a question that, at least in the West, is increasingly being asked. And so this is the context. This is the world that I'm training students in my seminary to go out and serve in. And if I'm not helping them think through these issues, then I may be letting them down in some ways. I don't want to be too harsh because some of these are very new issues that many parts of the church were just not equipped to respond yet. And so we want to begin to do that. I think for a church, 
one of the most exciting things for me as a believer who was just starting to realize how God had been on the move in the global church. I was just thrilled to, to hear of the growth of the church in the majority world. Today, the largest Christian population is in Africa in terms of continents. It's thought that by 2050, half of all Christians will be African. 80% of evangelicals are, are Asian, Latin American, African today. And so I think for churches, whether they're in the, the majority world or in the West, to hear how God is on the move, how he has been in some ways bringing a fulfillment to the Great Commission in some parts of the world. I think that's encouraging. That's exciting. And that's something that we want to praise God for. And so for a church to hear those things, but then also to think, okay, well, whether we're in Tulsa or Tehran or Timbuktu, how's our little church going to both locally and globally engage in the Great Commission? I would suggest that if your heart really is to help fulfill the Great Commission, then being updated on, on its status and hearing new opportunities for partnership for that will be, I mean, a, a no-brainer <laughs> for me. You know, Justin, as you were sharing, I just couldn't help but think of the untapped potential that is sitting within our seminaries, that is sitting within our churches. And this is an opportunity to unleash that potential for the kingdom of God. I would like to take a moment just to pivot now, pivot the conversation. We've spoken about the broader vision of um, the satellite science, but I would like us to go down and focus in on the localized experience. Could you take a moment to share some of the key elements or events at the satellite sites that we're going to be broadcasting for the fourth Congress? And what kind of activities and engagements do you anticipate happening at these satellite sites during the Congress? So what we want to do is bring the salient pieces of the Congress into local communities. And so we're going to capture every plenary session, and that'll include, as I mentioned earlier, a series of expositions through the Book of Acts. So each day on site, we're going to start in the Word together and hear fresh, faithful teaching from the Book of Acts. We're going to hear plenaries. They're going to be plenaries discussing, as I said, some of these gaps in the Great Commission some of the opportunities in the Great Commission. We're going to hear, again, updates on this, on what God's been doing in different regions. And what we want to do is, as we bring those into a local community, whether that's a, a school, a workplace network, a church, is we want to then wrap those video resources with facilitation guides with some small group curriculum so that as a, for instance, a church, Maybe we hear an update on what God's been doing among diaspora people in the world, people on the move. Well, we may find ourselves, maybe we're in a place like Minneapolis where there's a growing Somali population, one of the most unreached peoples on the planet, the Somalis. And so as we hear that challenge, that, that plenary session, we're going to have a time to wrestle with it here in our local community. What should our response be? Let's spend some time praying together about it. What opportunities are we aware of locally? What opportunities might we be aware of globally? Uh, maybe we, we're not aware of any, and so we need to ask for help. We need to ask someone to come and speak into this because we want to be involved. And so it is the content that's coming into these local communities from the Congress, but it will be brought so that we can wrestle with it and respond to it. One of the things that we're trying to figure out what this will look like now, so I don't know if you even leave this into <laughs> this interview, but we're trying to find ways for those who will be on site in Seoul and those who are at these satellite sites to encourage one another, to connect somehow with each other and, and even help sites connect with each other. If, if there are you know, five sites in Sydney, Australia, it, it'd be great for them to know each other. If there are 15 sites in Jos, Nigeria, it'd be great for them to be aware of each other. And so we're figuring out how that works because we have to follow the law on giving out information, but we want to make some connections for people in these sites. So we're exploring that and you can pray for wisdom for how we do that. Well, 
Well, this certainly is a massive endeavor. Thank you for sharing a bit of the dynamic elements that are going to be playing out during the satellite sites. Could you take a moment to dig a little bit deeper for me and share some of your desired outcomes that you're envisioning for this initiative? Yeah, I think I've mentioned a few things that as they're wrestling with these gaps and these challenges and opportunities, the goal is that they would find their unique role in helping fulfill the Great Commission. The Great Commission's big. You know, if it's a, a, a huge pie, <laughs> my church, my denomination, we can't do the whole thing. And so helping schools, churches, networks identify their piece, this part of the Great Commission, that's, I can help with that. I can't help with all these other things, but I can help with that. And so some examples of the kinds of changes that might come. Well, for a school, Jason, I don't know if you know this, but mission studies in some parts of the world, particularly the West, are experiencing hard times. Some of the most historic schools of world mission have shut down in the last few years. Many schools are cleaning mission faculty. Many have gotten rid of all mission classes. They may still have a couple of like global Christianity classes or world religions classes. But in terms of, hey, we have a commission from the Lord. We have a mission to fulfill. That's, uh, that idea is on, is, has fallen on hard times in some parts of the world. And so how can we inspire those schools then that might host to pray towards and work towards a renewed focus on missional training? In some sense, because, the, because of globalization, it doesn't matter where you're going to say pastor if you're not ready to help see the gospel cross cultural barriers to reach lost people, then you're not prepared for ministry today in the 21st century. And so even more so, not just missionaries being sent, but every gospel minister needs more mission training, not less. And so maybe for schools, it results in rethinking what they're doing in terms of training for mission or training their folks who will maybe be pastors, how, how they can train their church for mission. I've talked a little bit about churches. I, I think for mission agencies, th there might be some tweaks that need to be made. Some of that may be we, we've drifted a bit. We've done these certain activities in the past, but maybe those things just aren't really what's needed most today. Can we pivot? Can we innovate? A friend of mine, uh, Ted Esler, has written a book on innovation and mission, and it's clear we're, we're not very good at innovating. Often I'll have people ask me, hey, you're with Lausanne, what's the next big thing in mission? And uh, <laughs> because we, we want to know, we want to be aware, and I often respond, well, the mission hasn't changed. We don't need to innovate on the mission. The, Jesus is clear on that one. But how we engage it, the, the creative ways we can get the word out, uh, the creative ways we can gain access to people who need the gospel. And we've not done a great job, but this is a chance for maybe mission agencies or networks to learn from some best practices, to learn from what others in other regions are doing. So in terms of impact, the, the hope is those gaps that we've identified in the Great Commission are fulfilled, that the challenges are addressed. You know, Justin, as you were speaking, the picture that came to my mind was that of a fresh wind blowing into the sails of seminaries and of schools and of churches and in organizations, a fresh wind that is just inspiring people in God's mission. And so I could imagine that there's a few people that are listening to this. They're saying, Justin, you've painted the picture for me. I'm in. I want to be involved. How can they get involved? Can you help them take their next steps to get connected into the satellite sites? Well, it's a pretty simple process for registering a satellite site. So that would be the first step would be to register. It's a little bit of a mouthful, lazan.org slash L4 slash Seoul hyphen 2024 hyphen satellite hyphen sites. And so getting registered, it's pretty simple. To host, you will need to affirm the Lazan historic documents, so especially the kind of our statement of faith, the Lausanne Covenant. You will need a place to meet, and that can be online. A group can gather online to meet as a satellite site, but 
I think most will meet in an office or in a church or in a, a chapel, in a classroom, something like that. And then the, the goal is you are getting the word out in your community for participation. Again, if it's a church, you're letting your people know, hey, this is, this is when this will happen. I think we'll talk a little bit about kind of flexibility for, for local sites in, in a minute, but you're getting the word out. I always suggest coffee and food. So <laughs> arranging those sorts of things, it, it's just always good. Jesus was often at meals and ministering there. So why wouldn't we do that too? So it's pretty simple. There is, I'll mention this here, there is a suggested registration fee of a hundred US dollars. We don't want that to be an issue for any site. So if that is a challenge or a problem, uh, we don't want it to be, so it's not. And so there'll be some instructions there on the, the registration page for those that that might be a problem. And for those that could give more than that to maybe help offset the cost for other sites, we'd encourage you to give more as well. But we want as many sites as possible to host. Maybe I can say a quick word just about satellite sites. Often when people hear satellite sites, they think, okay, you've probably identified a site in London and that will be the site. And everyone from around London will go to that one site Maybe it's at this large church or at this venue. And uh, that's often how satellite sites are done. But this is, we're doing it a little bit differently. And part of that is we, again, we want as many people to participate as possible. So it, it's not, there's one site in a city. There could be dozens and dozens and dozens of sites in, in a given city. Now we'd encourage them to get to know each other, maybe meet together if, you know, if there's space and if there's opportunity for that. I know in a, a city like Chiang Mai, Thailand, where you have so many ministries with headquarters and bases there, part of me wonders why wouldn't they get together? But it's not that's not required. It, it, it could be as small as a church planting team or a mission committee or a board of directors, all the way to as large as a, a mega church or a, a city network meeting together. We want it to be the ability for people to participate, we wanted to maximize that. So in terms of engagement, get registered and then start getting the word out and start planning what you need to do locally. There will be an orientation process. So we'll, we'll do a little bit to help train whoever registers as the point person, train them in some facilitation skills if that's needed. They'll be invited to engage in some pre-Congress content and interaction. And we'll walk them through getting the word out and we'll try to get some material to them, whether it's images to post on the website or to put into the, the bulletin or to send out in an email. We want to resource them so that that's, that's as easy as possible. So yeah, first step, get registered. It is very simple to host a satellite site. All you got to do is go register on our webpage. We're going to link to that in our show notes. Now, Justin, you mentioned that there's going to be a bit of flexibility for the host sites. Now, we hope that they're going to be sites across the world from diverse communities. How can these communities tailor the program for the satellite sites to their unique context? Well, first is in terms of time. We know that if we capture about four hours of plenary content a day on site, that many, many of these satellite sites won't be able to meet for four hours of content and then however long it takes to discuss that content, right? And so there's flexibility for sites to engage as much of the content as they can. So some sites might choose to meet over that week in the evenings, you know, everyone's off work and they spend the evening having a meal together. Let's say if this is a church and then engaging for three hours together Maybe for some people, it it would fit better having their satellite site meet Friday night, all day Saturday, and then into Sunday. Maybe it's their church community. Maybe it's work uh, ministry community. So there will be time options. They, they get to determine uh, how much time and over how many days they might want to meet. And that means that they will need to choose what parts of the Congress they're going to engage. As you said, Jason, we don't. We hope that that doesn't end up with them just engaging 
only their one issue that they're most passionate about. They should do that. But we hope that they at least get to see some of the other issues, some of the other important needs in the world. You know, if they're passionate about their region, if they're just passionate about East Asia, if they're passionate about the South Pacific, don't only engage the things that that speak directly to your region, but begin to understand what God's doing in other regions. Maybe there's lessons we can learn as God is on the move in these other places. So we encourage broad engagement, but in the end, each satellite site will, based on how much time they have and how many days they meet, will have an opportunity to choose, okay, well, here are the parts we're going to engage. Yeah, the book of Acts, we definitely want to and we want to hear those expositions. We want to wrestle together over what God's saying there in Acts chapter 2, for instance. So there, there's time, flexibility. There's content, what you engage in, flexibility. We don't want the sites to feel, it, it's going to feel foreign in some ways to, to every group because it's not their denomination only. It's not their uh, school only. But we hope it feels like something that, oh, we're part of this global evangelical community, if I can use that word. But some other ways that you might, they might make it their own as well is if it's a church, and maybe they have a missionary that they support that's home, and they invite that missionary to share about their ministry as a part of that gathered time. Or maybe they pray for those ministries around the world that they partner with and support. And they spend some time in prayer for their, you know, the, the ways they are currently engaging in fulfilling the Great Commission. Maybe if it's a if it's a school, one of the faculty gives an address of some kind. Maybe the president of that school gives a report on the history of that school's role in the Great Commission. I think of my the seminary I went to has had a prayer meeting going daily for, I think, the last 30, 40 years at Prayers for the Nations prayer meeting going. Why do we do that? Well, here at this seminary, <laughs> we believe that God has a mission to fulfill in, in all nations, and that's why we do what we do. So we hope they'll find ways that they can update their people or engage their people in, in what God's already been doing through their community or historically, in, in terms of the Great Commission. I think the last thing I would say, if you're a network or you have influence in a network, one of the things we hope you'll do is you'll walk alongside of the groups in that network. So let me give an example. If you are a denominational leader and you were to say to the churches in your denomination, we encourage you all to serve as satellite sites for the, the upcoming Congress. That's great. We want that. L Lausanne would be happy for you to do that. But what if you thought through ways you are going to serve those churches in your denomination around mission, especially coming out of hosting a satellite site? They're going to hear the needs of the Great Commission in the world, and that would be a great time for as a denomination for you to be thinking, okay, how are we as a denomination engaging these gaps? And how can we come alongside of individual congregations as they start to say, well, what can we do? Hopefully, I'll, I'll have five or six kind of ready options for, okay, here's, here's where your church is at. I want to connect you with this opportunity. Oh, your church feels like they're just at the very beginning. They, they're not sure what else is going on, how to even begin. Well, here's some kind of first steps you can take to to become more aware of the needs in the Great Commission and to, to find your role. So those are some ways that I think a local group could personalize their experience or a network could personalize their experience. If, if I'm a seminary president and I ask our alumni network to consider hosting, which I hope all of any seminary presidents listening would, hey, if you're alumni of our school, we want to encourage you to host a, a satellite site. I'm also thinking, well, okay, how's our school going to serve our alumni as they host these things and as they come out of hosting these sites? So those are a few ways.
Thank you, Justin. That was really insightful. I want to touch on something that you were mentioning as you were closing your thoughts. You spoke about the long-term impact that people like seminary presidents could expect or hope for if they hosted a gathering. And I'd like to build upon that. What are your hopes for the long-term impact of a satellite site on a community? How do you envision the satellite sites contributing towards that community and towards the understanding of God's mission as they go back out into the world? In Lausanne, we, we talk about L4. So that stands for Lausanne 4. But it's not just that week in Korea. It actually started three years ago when we started this listening process that I mentioned earlier, and it goes to the year 2050. So in our minds, what we're doing right now is not putting on an event and then saying, I hope you enjoyed the event. See you later. It's calling people to step into an ongoing partnership, an ongoing process. So we listened to the needs. We're, we've been listening. We're now going to present the needs of the Great Commission. And our goal moving forward is that we're catalyzing what we're calling collaborative action teams. And so these satellite sites, my prayer is that each one would become or participate in a collaborative action team. And these, these are teams that have just said this, what, you know, gap A in the Great Commission or gap 27 in the Great Commission, we care about that one. We want to partner with others. And so we're going to join. We're going to link arms with others who are going to try to fill that gap. And so we're collaborating with others. We're a team, right, with these others taking action together. And so that's the goal. These sites would become those who are collaborating to fill the gaps in the Great Commission and so one of the things Lausanne is doing moving forward is we are creating a, a platform, a place where people who want to fill particular gaps can find each other, can start to talk to one another about these gaps and start to find ways to collaborate together. Uh, we want to resource them with models for innovation. Here are models for collaboration. We found in our research that a lot of people want to collaborate. They just don't know how. And so the goal with this platform then would be that we are both resourcing them around collaboration. Here are approaches to collaboration. Here's maybe some facilitation for your group to collaborate together for this team or these teams. And so what I'd like to see happen following the satellite sites is that the satellite sites who really want to engage in that ongoing collaboration, that on ongoing process, would then have an opportunity to let us know that they, they would like that and then start the process of being added to that platform for collaboration. So in, in short, the goal is from three years ago to 2050 to see a, a new mobilization of collaborative action teams who are specifically trying to fill the gaps in the Great Commission that we've identified. And, you know, Jason, we may in 10 years, 15 years at that point need to pause again, right? And listen again and say, okay, what progress have we made? You know, what's the state of the Great Commission now in 2034, in 2040? Okay. The, the gaps, some of them have, are full. Praise the Lord. Some of them actually, you know, took a step back. Oh, maybe there are some new gaps. And certainly there will be new challenges. And so the invitation towards 2050 isn't, hey, I'm going to make a decision today and I'm going to do X for the next 26 years. It's joining an ongoing community that's keeping their ear to the ground on what God is doing in the world. Occasionally, we'll look up, we'll meet together and say, what progress has been made? Do we need to tweak what we're doing? Okay, we all right, well, then let's keep going. So that's the invitation. It would be a global, ongoing process of clarity on the Great Commission and then engaging it. Justin, thank you for taking time to share with us about the satellite sites. For those who are interested, just a reminder that in the podcast notes, we're going to put a link to the landing page for the satellite sites on the Lausanne website. So if you're interested, your next step is to go and sign up. 
Uh, Justin, as we bring this interview to a close, we have people from all over the world that are watching and listening to this podcast. As we bring it to a close, do you have any closing thoughts that you'd like to share with our audience? Well, first, I would say if if you have questions, and this will be on the registration page, but if you have questions, don't hesitate to email satellite sites at lazan.org. We want to try to, to field those questions and serve you the best we can. We're praying. We're praying for 100,000 sites. We're asking the Lord for that many. And in some ways, that almost feels like too little of faith because the global church is so much bigger than that. But it's stretching us as a team. It's stretching us to pray and work towards 100,000. So I would ask those listening, think through your network. Think through your sphere of influence. Think through the groups and the people that you could get the word out to as well, whether that's join you locally or they're somewhere else and they host a site there. We know we can't do it on our own. And the problem in fulfilling the Great Commission has always been we can't do it on our own, but we keep trying. (laughs) But no single network, no single denomination can do it. I am encouraged, though, Jason. We looked recently and and we found, I don't know now, maybe a couple dozen networks around the world that their stated goal is the fulfillment of the Great Commission. And they define that maybe a little bit differently than one another. But certainly we could at least say that the places on planet Earth where Jesus is still unknown, that he would become known, that the church would be established, God's people would be established in that place or among those that people. That there are dozens of groups that are saying, that's why we exist. And so this is a good time to be talking about it. This is a good time to say, well, then let's link arms. We all want this to happen. And so let's work together to do it. That's exciting. I think the Lord's been sowing that by the Spirit in a number of continents, countries, networks for such a time as this, that we can partner together. We can do so much more together than we could do on our own. But it seems like the Spirit is preparing the way for that. So that's exciting. It is really an exciting and ambitious project. I love the vision. I love the desire to include the whole church in the Congress and then to inspire a new generation towards the fulfillment of the Great Commission. And so, Justin, thank you for your time. Thank you for sharing with us about the Satellite Science Initiative. And I pray and I trust that God will bless you and your team and your endeavor. Yeah, thank you, Jason. Thanks for this time. And God bless you all.